Hi guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as you probably saw in the title, we are going to analyze the play Intimate Apparel by Lynn Nottage, a play that was written in 2003, I believe, so fairly recently, right? But the context and the story itself takes place in the 1900s, so the story is not that modern. Anyways, let me just give you a little context before we go into the analysis. So it's the story of this 35-year-old African-American woman uh, living in the beginning of the 20th century in New York. And she is defined by the term spinster, which is a very pejorative term commonly used in those days to define um, older women who are unmarried. It revolves around this correspondence that starts between a man working on the Panama Canal named George and the main character, Esther. Um, the main characters in this play are, of course, Esther, the main character, George, um, Miss Van Buren, who is keeping on this correspondence for Esther as she cannot read or write, um, Miss Dixon, the landlord, for Esther in the beginning of the story, and also a close friend and confidant. Mr. Marks, a textile worker who sells all of the fabric for Esther to make her intimate apparel for her clients. Uh, and Mame, who is Esther's best friend, an African-American woman. Without further ado, let's dive into the play and go into more detail. First of all, a very important point that I wanted to talk about is the how the author deals with intimacy and if any of the characters truly achieve intimacy in the end. So as we know, the name of the play is Intimate Apparel. And so the, the theme of intimacy is already in the title. And also an interesting thing the, that the playwright does in this play is she takes very diverse characters that are uh, from different social ranks, different ethnicities, but one common trait in all of these characters is their um, lack of intimacy. So an example of these relationships that lack intimacy are Miss Van Buren with her husband. Uh, she's actually relieved when he goes to Europe, um, as said in this passage. Um, it's a relief, actually, some business obligations. I don't expect to see him for months, so she's relieved about this. Um, she doesn't have a good relationship with her husband. It comes up again when Miss Dixon is talking about her husband and how she had to get married at the age of 37 because she was a spinster. Uh, she said... I married Mr. Dixon because I was a 37-year-old, I had no profession, and there wasn't a decent colored fella in New York that would have me. So she was desperate. She married Mr. Dixon because he was respectable and because she couldn't find anyone else. So, of course, their relationship won't be as good as a relationship built on love. This brings me to the point, do any of the characters really reach intimacy in the end of the play and I would tend to say no because they're all out of relationships or none of them have really solved the relationship they were in and the lack of intimacy they were in although many of them have a brief moment of intimacy during the play uh, such as Miss Van Buren with Esther because she becomes the the writer of the letters and kind of Esther's confidant and she's just involved with Esther which she desperately wants and what she gets with Esther and also Mr. Marks and Esther even though it never fully develops but overall in the end of the play none of them really get intimacy but this actually reminds me of this discussion I just happened to be watching the other day um, with a director of this play 
uh, who put on this play, and it just consists of many interviews with actors, with the director, and what one interview I thought was particularly interesting was the one with the actress who plays the role of Esther, so Nikki Walker, who says that in the end for her, she felt as though in the end um, Esther does reach intimacy, which I thought was so interesting because it, it made me reread the end of the, of the play to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I actually have to agree with her that she does reach intimacy with herself since um, she has enough courage to leave George because she knows that that's just a fake relationship and that she's into no good with George. And she has enough courage to not give up on her dream and follow her dream. And she lightly touches her belly, which makes us think she might be pregnant. So she has to think about someone other than herself. And I think she, the new intimacy she finds within herself is related to this person growing inside of her. But again, nothing is explicit. We do not know if she really does reach intimacy within herself or even if she is pregnant. So all of this is very out in the open. A predominant motif um, in this play is the motif of textiles and fabric and the touch of it, which can reveal different characters' emotions through the stage directions. Um, so different emotions are uh, declared through these fabric. For example, uh, one of them is the lack of intimacy. Esther is putting on the corset for Miss Van Buren on Miss Van Buren. Uh, it says in the stage directions that Miss Van Buren tenses slightly at the sensation of being touched. It's so revealing uh, into the character of Miss Van Buren that she isn't touched and she doesn't have any intimacy. Uh, the lack of confidence in oneself and so in my sticky notes these are the pink ones and there's so many of them it's the same stage direction repeated for several different characters so the first character it shows up is Esther she self-consciously runs fabric across her face then releases it and the self con the self-consciously um comes up again so Mr. Marx he self-consciously touches the spot. Mame suddenly self-conscious she touches the beating on the corset. It, it just it's a, a recurring stage direction that shows the lack of confidence so the lack of intimacy with oneself. Uh, then there is just the intimacy itself not the lack of intimacy but the intimacy uh, where um, Esther runs her fingers down the front of Miss Van Buren's silk corset. So again, that relationship I touched on earlier. The underlying love is also um, seen through the textiles and the touching of the textiles, especially between Mr. Marx and Esther. Uh, Mr. Marx touches the fabric sensually. He closes his eyes. He continues to watch her savoring the moment. It's a forbidden relationship. Uh, one for Mr. Marx because of his religion and two for Esther because she is married. So, yeah. Um, and Mr. Marx slowly rolls down the lace, his disappointment palpable. Mr. Marx and Esther, their whole relationship revolves around these textiles because it's in both of their works and that's what brought them close and so it's really what links them together with the button with this the textiles and this motif is very important as it reveals a lot of characteristics on the characters without them having to say it we can just see it through the stage directions of them touching these textiles. So guys, we're coming to the end of this video. Okay, so I would rate it out of 10, a nine out of 10, because it's a really exciting play when you get to the end of it. 
I was really surprised by the end, and I think you guys would be too. Um, what we discover with George, um, it's really, it keeps you on the edge of your seat and you're just shocked. And I really love that in a play, a play that shocks me. The only downside, I think, is the lack of action really in the beginning of the play so it's kind of dull in the beginning of the play but it speeds up really quickly and just the theme with the universality of uh, the lack of intimacy I think that's really interesting because it's true that a lot of people struggle with it and it's not a common theme throughout plays I think it was a really good play I still have a lot of analysis to make on this play so if you guys liked it um, and want a part two, of course, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh no, I can't do that.